The following program is hosted by immature, irreverent, obnoxious, and often disgusting young men. Listener discretion is advised. This time on Nude Clan, the answer's midway. Shall we play a game? Welcome to another episode of Nude Clan. I am Joe. I am Caleb Craig. I am Caleb Schweiss. And this is Cam. Today we are talking about the history of video games. Pot. Dos. Part two. That's right. That's right, big boy. But quick. Plugs. You can go to NudeClan.net, which will take you over to UltimateFinalFantasy.com, where you can join our forums and ask your questions. Uh, you can also check out our Facebook page, Facebook.com slash NudeClanPodcast. That's nude spelled N-E-W-D. And check us out. We'll play in the fucking games, right? Twitch.tv slash NudeClanGaming. And NudeClanPodcast at gmail.com is also where you can uh, email us. You can find me on Twitter at Joseph DeGolier. Me at Obsidian Bar. Me at UFF Podcast. And me at Nude Clan Cam. All right, guys. What has everybody been playing? Caleb? Uh, I have just been playing Dying Light, as that is the next review. Um, I just beat it uh, yesterday, uh, as well as the Uncharted uh, game, the first one. So I am now <laughs> the one. Uncharted game. Yes, yes. yes cause there are three. Just I'm about well, to chart four, it. Well, on. there's five now. Okay. So you beat Dying Light and Uncharted this week. Yep. Nice. That's yes, that's two me, more. Two more for the hog. Yes, putting me once again above Caleb. Yes. He beat me briefly for like a day. Speaking but of, I couldn't have it. <laughs> Speaking of, what has Caleb uh, twice been playing? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I just barely finished up Dirge of Cerberus for our Ultima Final Fantasy. The Ultimate Final Fantasy podcast, by the way. It's the greatest <laughs> podcast of Final Fantasy. The best. Um, we, uh, the ultimate, even. Yeah, so I finished Dirge up, and then I also went through and finished up Dead Space. I've been meaning to go back and finish the Platinum for that game. I picked up all but one of the trophies I need to beat it on Impossible Mode, and I am halfway through the game. On that mode of difficulty. Nice. And I like how as soon as we started listing the hog status, suddenly you guys kicked into, like, uber gear. Yeah. What do you, yeah. What do you, what do you mean, Joe? I mean, like, all of a sudden, Caleb's back to playing Dead Space, <laughs> and then you play Uncharted. Yeah. Come on. Well, come, come on. on. Come on, I what? mean, Caleb was ahead of me by, like, one game. I couldn't have that... <laughs> so uh you know i also did something else game like uh there's this there's this business around here that's called get out games and uh what you do is they put you in a room and you have to figure out how to get out of the room and we were in this ancient egypt one uh last night we did a group activity for work and it was pretty fun there were like hieroglyphics that we had to translate to get messages and place uh idols like statues of the gods in a certain position and then open up the next room like there was a part where we got a key to a sarcophagus and there was like a hidden wall like we pulled on a lever and the wall opened up behind us like it was awesome did they set this up for wow. work or you had to go to a place it's a business it's they they okay. it that way yeah where it was it freaking at? legit it's on uh university avenue here in provo so how much does it cost to get in I don't know. They used uh, spiff money, is what they call it. Uh, just extra funds that they do fun activities for us for. Well, it sounds like we might have an activity cut out for us guys. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, that, and then uh, I think I played a little bit of, no, I didn't play Battlefront. That's about it. That's about it? Okay. Yeah. What about you, Game Game? So I, last week I beat Far Cry Primal, so now this week I'm going to be playing um, Dying Light. I it took forever last night to download it. And 
I was playing it this morning, and then, no, the whole game actually wasn't downloaded. <laughs> Just the tutorial part. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it did and that then, to me, too. Like, when I first started it, uh, it only let me play, like, the ver- very beginning part, teaching you how to use, like, the the jumping, the, the parkour of the game because it has that in there okay and then there's a part where you have to like go down the elevator so to go now, out yeah to so the open now world, it's time to play like, the game <laughs> no it's actually time to play the game it's not actually downloaded it's like oh, oh, oh yeah now you have to Joe wait some more confused by the parkour element. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. although you know it's not the first game that's uh let yeah, me play a little it, bit it, of it and then it was like no you can't go on it anymore. makes sense just think of it think of watching an episode of walking dead where all the characters can climb and jump off things <laughs> Them this will climb up the sides of buildings and so they can run away it's from like the zombies. It's like a first person's Assassin's Creed. Yeah. But it's, it's a zombie game? Yeah. I mean, the zombies are okay. actually outrageous. The zombies are more difficult to kill than in any other zombie game. Number one, because you're not supposed to use guns, really, because it attracts more zombies. So, and your weapons, they'll after a few, you know, using it for a little bit, they'll degrade and you have to repair it. And a weapon can only be repaired a certain amount of times before it's dead. Huh. And you have Stanima. Stan, stamina, 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 stamina. Stan, stamina. So you can only swing your <laughs> weapon. You can only swing your weapon a certain <laughs> amount of times before Whoa. before you can't swing it anymore and have to go rest. Yeah, fun stuff. And so if you if you're surrounded by a group of zombies that's like larger than three, then you really have to like dance back and forth to kill them. <laughs> nice to get wow. put on some music. No. Yeah, yeah. You are you gonna be able to finish it before next time? Yeah. Okay, that's so, uh, Caleb. This game is very similar to one that we both played. Um, one of us to completion, of course, myself. Mm. Uh, Dead Island. Um, it looks like it's the same exact game as Dead Island, but I don't think Dead Island had this the uh, the stamina thing. I don't remember that at least. Stamina, uh, I Caleb. Stamina. I think it did. I think it did. Caleb. I don't. I don't remember it being as effective as it is in this game, though. No, so. I think I think it was more. They had more stamina. Okay. In that game. What about you, Joe? What have you been playing? I only played Dirge of Cerberus this week. Only uh, the Dirge. Only the Dirge, and that's because I only had time for the Dirge, and don't uh, and actually quite a bit of time yesterday because I played eight and a half hours of it to beat it uh, yesterday, <laughs> and uh, so that I could review it for Ultima Final Fantasy, the Ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. Um, and uh, it was not great. It's kind of a bad game, actually. Uh, for the PS2, it was, came out in 2006. It's a it's a Final Fantasy VII spinoff, and it's uh, it's really no good. Have you ever played it, Caleb Craig? I did, and I don't remember it being that terrible. But then again, I played it uh, a little bit after it came out because Caleb let me borrow it. Okay, oh, so, so you finished I it. I have no no recollection of it being that bad. So okay. you finished it before you finished Final Fantasy VII, then. Yeah. You son wow. Of a bitch. You fuck. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, Cameron, I know you don't play that many Final Fantasy games. Would you no. play a Final Fantasy shooter? You know, I will. This is I'm telling to you guys. I will give any Final Fantasy game a chance. I'm not. It's not like a. I'm biased against the challenge the accepted. I. I am, now they're gonna force you to I play am one. Biased <laughs> against the turn based portion of you know final fantasy but come to find out not all of them are really that way and i'll even give turn-based a chance i mean i I played pokemon pokemon's turn-based yeah dude if you oh, have yeah. the patience for pokemon you will have but the patience see, see, for final remember, fantasy remember yeah. the, the last time i played pokemon all i did my only goal was to turn my to get the my, gyarados my magic yeah. carp into gyarados and then i was done i never played it again <laughs> <laughs> i want the number one and then wow. i'm out Wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, Dirge of Service was my only game, and I did beat it. Uh, Cameron, did you beat any games this week? Um, Not this week. Okay. All right. So, the hog status lies with uh, Caleb Craig ahead, yes. Schweiss at negative one, I'm at negative three, and Cameron is at negative one, six. Cameron's at negative six on the hog status uh, on the hog status list. I like how we how we're using that method instead of just counting the total of g- amount of games we've beaten. No, no, I want people to feel bad. It should be a year. <laughs> it should be an annual contest, I think. So I think it's fair. And it would take forever if I like at near the end of the year if I have to like list off every single game. Though I think it might be <laughs> close to the same, even if we did that. 
Because I'm pretty sure Caleb's beaten more games than me. I've beaten more games than you or Joe, most likely. In life? Yeah, yeah. it might yeah. be pretty close with you and Joe. You might actually be beating Joe, Cameron. I'm not sure. I though. probably, in life, I'm, I'm probably beating Joe in the amount of video games beaten, but not this year. Yeah. No. So I, I, I like the <laughs> I like the layout. Like Total beaten is kind of cheap. Some of our lists are... Okay, Caleb is at 10 questions. games. Then. Yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, we do have one iTunes review. No, we have two. I call the one that's for me. <laughs> As he clambers up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, my turn. Read. <laughs> okay. Well, you going to get over here twice? Yeah, I'm coming. He's got to put his pants on too, guys. Just one second. Just give him one moment. One moment. One moment. One moment. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, this one is called Quadrapalooza, a five-star review from Apocalypse. I just caught up to the current show. I love the variety of game reviews, topics, hog status, and getting fat. You four make a great team for casual gamers to the platinum gamers. This brings in <laughs> audience audiences from all extremes and in the betweens. Keep up the great work. Hashtag Team Schweiss. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag go fuck yourself. Do they like hire a review writer to write the reviews? No. And all in, in, in the betweens. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong? Who was in the between? Is that you guys, <laughs> I guess? No, in between the extreme of super casual versus yes. the super platinum. platinum. Because yeah, well, some of us are extremely casual gamers, and some of us just, some of us are just the opposite. I really just think we have the two extremes. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the in between. Yeah, but I guess it brings in the in between. Unless right? unless you can say Joe that you are the in between right now, and I am the casual end of it, just because the amount of games. Yeah, where we my air conditioner on? Where we are on the hog status? Where list? we are on the hog status? Yeah. Yeah. Did you do that, Joe? No, I didn't. I really okay. did not turn on your air conditioning today. Yesterday, I didn't either, but the day before, I did. Oh, my God. It's been going for three days, Caleb. The money out of your pocket. <laughs> the money. <laughs> it changes. makes you sweat in a different way. Uh, yeah. The problem is that, like, I don't know what it is about Caleb's place, but probably because it's, like, covered in carpet or something. But Covered in carpet. Uh, yeah, for the walls, walls and the ceiling are carpeted. <laughs> Even uh, the fan. But it just always feels, like, just a little warm in here. And then when it gets to about the 80-degree point... That's about the moment where I just stop functioning. Like I have to lay on the couch and do nothing because I can't. <laughs> I can't even like. I can't even. I don't even have the energy to get up the house. If you think it's bad, just <laughs> off the bat, you have no idea. Eighty, eighty plus Joe is just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like da- mm, mm, mm. not gonna say it. Well, no. even, you can't even speak. <laughs> the the thing is that like Cody at our place keeps it at at least or at the most sixty eight degrees. And so, like, I'm used to that now. It's like, oh, yeah. it's nice and cool. Except and I can think clearly, and it's wonderful. <laughs> but even if it's super cold, Cameron, I could put on a blanket and be comfortable. I'm, I, I'm not a warm. I can't do the warm. Except it's the reverse in the in too the, hot uh, in the summertime. The upstairs check it and too see hot. twice. He's got a fever. I got of a fever of 103. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. Come on, do baby. Your, do, do, you do more, more than dance. Than dance. Hot blooded, man. Hot blooded. All right. <laughs> Our second iTunes review is uh, from Dog157. It says, Fantastic. Five stars. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Just when I thought that you guys couldn't top UFF. And believe me, Whoa. I was skeptical at first. You guys delivered an even more stellar show <laughs> than I could have hoped for. Stellar. Uh, thoroughly enjoy the podcast, and I look forward to it every week but games that are played are popular and the opinions you share are genuine and you guys are hilarious i would love to be a guest mic on one week that would be dope i support you guys in every way keep up the good work and i say no 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 dog you're dope you dope dog uh, i i enjoy anyone who genuinely uses the word dope <laughs> Yeah. Well, well is he that says really dope music, yeah. He says he supports us Smoking in dope. every way. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, like, where's where's the monetary support? Where's our no? Where's our beer care package? Oh, beer care package. <laughs> That's flying it in. Look, if you're from Utah, drone. I'm not going to say no to the guest mic thing. If you're willing to drive, yeah. <laughs> even if even if you just want to make a road trip out of it, you know, no one's going to say no to you. I guess not. So, guys, I have a. 
before we get to our question of the day, people have been asking us on the Twitch uh, if we could every once in a while play a bad game. Yeah, you know and what have I told you guys, Caleb Schweiss? You had a great idea. You want to talk about it? Well, yes, I, I kind of want to do a video game that's based on a movie. Yeah, so. Every couple of months, we have the movie based on a video game, and then we can swing that around and do video game based on a movie. Yeah, and I kind of want to play a genuinely bad game. I kind of want to make them the funny. atrocities of video games that are based on movies. The too. atrocities, Superman sixty four, not that bad. What would you call that? Aragon <laughs> the Ar- the Aragon game is that a game based I think on? It's movie? just called Aragon. But yeah, it, 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 it is based first. on the movie. Okay, good because that game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could go. We could do a whole myriad of them, like Harry Potter games. I don't think those were very good. Uh, well, some of them were okay. I played them as a kid. Maybe not the them. worst. Yeah, but uh, I think that'd be a fun idea. Just take a Superman <laughs> the video game. Yeah, or like the Iron Man video game. That's E.T. God awful. Yeah, the e. legendary E.T. I watched a documentary about them finding the E.T. cartridges. Like yeah. the uh, the treasure trove yeah, dude. of the, uh, the E.T.s. It was on Netflix. I wonder if it's still on there. I honestly can't remember the name of the documentary, but they, like, fucking went out and I found the E.T. Home. games in the dump, like, in the landfill. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> they had to find it in the landfill? Yeah. yeah did, did you wh- not know about that? Tell the them about... E. T., yeah. The E.T. games were so fucking awful that... It was literally game breaking, like glitches everywhere. And there were these and, pits that I guess yeah, people just, like you yeah. can't you can't like avoid them, and so they just decided to destroy their entire stock by throwing them all away. And yeah. and some of them were even like buried. There's a picture of them with a truck out by a landfill putting the games in the landfill. Like a like Atari had a truck full of these games yeah. and was just throwing them away. And so this documentary, they uh, they went what, out. What oh, God, I wish I could this? remember the name of the documentary. Just Atari, which Atari? It's just Atari. I don't know. It was probably the twenty six hundred. I would assume it's the eighties. Okay. I can't remember. Either. I don't know. We'll find out in the history of video games, Cameron. Um, <laughs> not part two though. Uh, <laughs> maybe part three. Yeah, uh, maybe like part four. Um, but uh, yeah, they they went out. They dumped through. They put it in the dump, and then uh, yeah, this documentary went came back all these How people came later? around they were digging this stuff out like hundreds of people showed up to see like this legendary yeah, the unveiling dump, <laughs> and it took them forever but like they found a few of the cartridges so it's like yeah this legitimately happened that they yeah. it was kind of a legendary thing like people were saying that that's what happened but they weren't 100 percent sure if they had in fact like actually hated the game so much that they dumped it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they found they yeah, found the cartridges it's pretty incredible cameron yeah, that's pretty good. How many years later, though? Oh, did they, have oh to do the they, they did it, like, what, a few years e. ago? E.T. was in 84, wasn't yeah. it? And then and the, that documentary was just a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, documentary. Yeah. Oh, man, what was left of those cartridges? They were fine. Yeah, they were. I think they were buried in just... It's like, plastic, camera, camera yeah. it doesn't just, like, Yeah, but what about the insides of it, though? You have your, like, metal parts and stuff. I don't stuff know if it ever if it worked. Yeah. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> But like the outside, I don't think they you'd look want pretty them good. to work anyway. From, <laughs> from you know the reasons yeah. they threw it away. <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty cool. And if someone has the name of that documentary, please let us know. Um, so our first question, I got two here because they're kind of smaller questions. Um, this is a question for the podcast from Shinru. Have any of you guys beat a Metal Gear Solid game? If so, which ones have you beaten? And basically, what are our thoughts on those? Uh, I haven't beaten any of them. I mean, I've played a few of them, but I haven't beaten any of them. What are your thoughts on them? They're kind uh, of a unique series because it's it's it like is, sneaking yeah. and boss fights, and those are usually like the worst parts the of two, games. Yeah, the two things that don't really go together. But no. uh, you know, I kind of do want to try replaying the first one. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, I've played through one, two, and three completely, and about ten hours of four. And that's uh, my Metal Gear Solid. Nice. I think they're fantastic. Yeah, they are fantastic. Uh, Cameron has the name of the documentary, by the way. So it is Atari Game Over. has a 6.8 on IMDb. That's pretty high for IMDb. Let's look at Rotten Tomatoes. Is it? <laughs> yeah. 
But like uh, that was 2014, it said. So yeah, it's like 20 years later. Yeah, they dug up those things. <laughs> That's uh, a game yeah. so bad we try to bury it. Yeah. So they, Cameron, they uh, kind of did the same thing with Final Fantasy 14, the first one. GameStop was like, if they got any traded in, they were like ordered to like break the copies. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Did you not know about that? No. Same with like older copies of Eleven. They're just like they're not selling them anymore, so they just destroy them. Wow. Yeah. That's oh, it was Steven Spielberg documentary, or he produced it, whatever. Did he really? Well, let's take a look. Well, th- don't say that unless you know. <laughs> it ha- his name is on it, so. Well, yeah, because it was E. T. Yeah, was e. his e. movie. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And he probably, I think he he has some appearances in old uh, old interviews and commercials. No, Steven Spielberg is in the cast, so maybe they just interviewed him. Yeah, that's part. That's okay. you put him in the cast if you ha- have video footage of them. Um, there isn't a a uh, tomato meter score, but it's an audience score of fifty nine percent. Oh, that's kind of low. I yeah. liked it. I did too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like the game. Uh, have you uh, or the movie? Have you uh, played Metal Gear Solid? I have not played a Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid game. Okay, so I've, I've be- played a Snake in Super Smash though. I've played. <laughs> I've That's basically the same. I've played a couple hours of, of like one, two, and four, um, and I've beaten three. You beat three, and yeah. I fucking loved three. And it's like one of my favorite games ever. And I don't know like why that hasn't like urged me to play the other ones, um, knowing it's a prequel. <laughs> uh, that might be part of it, but uh, I fucking love that game. It was so good. And I, I want to get back to that. I think I think I'll nominate Metal Gear Solid on our next uh, go around. Mm. Yeah, I wow. think I think so. Damn. For who? who um, do you play it with? I don't know. Whoever's next. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think I'll. Uh, yeah, since uh, since you're the only one who's beaten Metal Gear Solid, it should probably be with Caleb or Cameron. Um. Okay. So our second question is from Batman. Bat- Batman himself. Man. For anyone. Oh. No. Okay, I won't. <laughs> Don't read it like you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For anyone who has not watched them, I highly recommend these documentaries. Oh, and this is on his list. Atari Game Over. <laughs> 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 Video games, the movie, and indie game. I've seen all three of those. Yep. So have I. Uh, and indie game and Game Over probably my favorite ones video game the movie i think is kind of uh, i really enjoyed indie game yeah 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 it it, it definitely gives you like a, a good glimpse on the thing so he mm-hmm. was just wondering uh he was just listening to our history of video games episode and uh thought we could really benefit from watching those especially the atari documentary um and he suggests doing a review episode on them and i'm not going to do a review episode on them i think they're all good and i think most of them if not, all of them are still available on Netflix. So yeah. I would recommend out. watching them. Yeah, so. in, indie game, especially if you're interested in behind the scenes stuff on games. Yeah, it, yeah. it covers uh, Meat Boy. Um, what were the other two? I don't know. That's the one I always I, remember. Uh, there was uh, fuck. God, now I can't remember. Yeah, Fez, I think was the other one, and then one more. Oh God, damn it. I don't know, but it looks like you're about to take like one enormous shit when you're <laughs> thinking. No, nah, I don't. I don't remember what the other one was. Okay, so Batman says, "On to the question: Why do you think that movies based upon video games have been historically terrible? Do you ever foresee Hollywood making a successful video game movie? What video game would you like to see adapted for film?" Uh, so why have they been historically terrible? Because they've always been cash grabs. <laughs> yeah, That's cash grabs. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be my reasoning. That is usually the reason, and they never stick to the source material like yeah. a- at all. I mean, look at the Mario Bros. movie that we recently oh reviewed. Oh, my gosh. That was just skewwampus yeah, like, out there. Uh, this is that their first attempt, we're not, though. That, that was the first attempt yeah, at a video game attempt. movie, and they did not they stick just had, they to had no any idea what kind to do. of... They had no idea. That's because it wasn't theirs yeah, to play was... with. They didn't know it. They just wanted to cash in on another And Nintendo audience. approved yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Nintendo approved it. So, you know, the... Uh, oh, fuck. I had a really good point. 
And now I lost it. Go ahead. Somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always, you know, the rumor or there was the rumor that Halo was eventually going to be made into a movie. Oh, well, yeah. That yeah. became uh, District 9. The failed Halo and all the designs from that game became District 9, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. So if you count, fucking awesome. If you count District 9 as a movie based on a video game, then two that, thumbs up. Yeah, that's the best it one really easily. It was a really good movie. No, because if you did that, you'd have to count uh, Face Off as like a... No. As one because they use the boots they from lose, Super Mario. They lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I would say two thumbs up for Face Off, too. <laughs> yeah, so what I don't give a crap about how crazy and unrealistic Face Off is. I fucking love that movie. Hey, man, everybody else <laughs> does, too. <laughs> Who does? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, no, no, it's not like in Harry Potter um, where they burn down the burrow. It's not like that. That's for story, even though it's stupid. With video game ones, they're not sticking to the source material at all because they don't know the source material because all they want to do, they see this market. They're like, hey, there's not that many video game movies. Let's try to make one. Let's make some money off of this. Video games are a big thing Cut now. to, hey, there's uh, not okay. that many movies. So, <laughs> Let's make another one. So with, yeah. that, so with that one, uh, they're, they're coming out often. with the uh, the Warcraft movie, which is being done by Blizzard. And then there's also another one. And it's being directed is... by a guy who's made, like, a couple really good movies. Okay. Um, one of which is Source Code, okay. which is a very, like, it was a very big movie, and it's very fun, and it was very well reviewed by critics, and I really like it. So I'm actually kind of like, well, they got a good filmmaker behind it, <laughs> so maybe it won't be too bad. It may be not be too bad. I don't know. All right. And then there's also the Ratchet and Clank movie, which is coming out soon, which I think is being done by Sony. Is that going to be um, live action or animated? No, it's animated. Okay, that's okay. good. So- um, and then that one, I think uh, they're trying to stick to the, the source material. I mean, they like remade the first game. To kind of promote the movie, I guess I don't. I don't really know what that what that's about. So, hopefully, that one will be pretty good. I mean, the Ratchet and Clank series is uh, yeah, kind of like a system seller for the the PS2, along with like you know the other great ones like Jack and Daxter stuff like that. So, but so those are like the the movies that are being made. Or rumors of movies being made from video games. But what what is a video game you would love to see a movie about? That you don't even that you have no idea that they're actually doing it. Fucking none of them. I wouldn't want to adapt a movie, uh, a, a game into a movie, and I don't think you need to. Frankly, it's already a visual medium. Yeah, I don't know if it really like oh, really needs it. I would love to see this video game's cutscenes all put together and <laughs> sh- shaved down to two hours, because <laughs> like, that's what people would want. But you, you know, could just do that your fucking self. I keep thinking so about like the my I- favorite. My favorite video game is Fallout Three, and I'm like, what would it be like if they made it into a movie? And I'm like, I just think it'd be another version of Mad Max. It, yeah, it pretty much would be. That's just that's what it would be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that whole adapting video games. I mean, it's funny for us to watch them trying. Oh my god. Oh yeah. And I have like occasionally like. If I were to write a screenplay for like a Final Fantasy game, like how would it be structured? And like what You'd exactly? You'd have to cut out a lot, dude. It's or, not about cutting out. I know it's about cutting out for you, and it's or, about cutting out for no. I know, but you like exactly with the what if, fantasy games. What if they did like, this though? What if it's not? They're not adapting a video game to a movie. They are using a movie to explain a certain part of a story the video game hadn't covered yet. Kind of like Advent. Uh, they do that already. Uh, they did that. I think there's a Halo movie about that and stuff like that. I actually think Halo would be an interesting one to make. Well, they do have like that. They had that Halo mini series <laughs> that came out, that little TV show that came yeah. out for Halo that you can, I used to be on Netflix. So you could watch it all together, which yeah. was not really Halo. It was just the Academy <laughs> for kids. That would require them to have a storyline. So yeah. I don't know how that would work out. Here's the thing with the game thing. And I, like you were talking story. about like cutting out <laughs> stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's not really about that. When people adapt a book or something, they basically read the book and then throw the book away so well, that I'm, they can make a movie out of it. Not always, it's not no, about but like there's it, keeping close to the to the book or the source material. It's about making a good movie out of those same ideas. You, it's not about keeping close to it because when you keep too close to it, it sucks too. So well, yeah. it's about having a good screenwriter behind it. it who knows what they're fucking doing. Yeah, but and even, they don't do that when they're making crap, <laughs> yeah, cash do, grab movies. Even with yes. that, though, I think you do need to stick to the source material somewhat. For the fans, yeah. Or just don't call it that. Yeah, yeah pretty much. If you're going to come it by out with another it, sort of truth series. Oh, my God. If you're going to call it by <laughs> another medium or another 
form of entertainment, same name, you should stick by it. Game of Thrones sticks by it real well. Yeah, but per- percentage of sticking by it is like keeping the world the same, keeping the major characters the same with similar personalities to what they had in the previous source materials. And then uh, general rules and uh, the general kind of like driving force behind it. Everything mm-hmm. else, it, it has to serve the movie. Can't just be serving. They can't be jacking off the fans all the time. No, oh, I know, but yeah. still. So if you need if you need a midpoint in your movie and you have to blow up the burrow, uh, otherwise your movie might sag in the middle because it doesn't have a midpoint. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is what happens to movies. But people watch movies and they don't know it. But most good movies have a very specific structure in mind, and some people hate they do. That idea. But I mean, there's there's some cases like when you watch uh, the the fourth one. The Goblet of Fire, where, yeah. like, his character, the character of Dumbledore is, like, super violent towards Harry when he finds out that he's in the, that he's, like, in the tournament when he's not supposed to be, and he, like, shoves him up against the wall. That's just bad, bad direction. That's not his character at all. Uh, I'm not the first three movies, the, from beyond that movie. But that was within its movie universe. If they had set up Dumbledore that way in the first movie. It would have worked, yeah. It would have worked. Not a problem at all. But so that's a movie. That's a not, that's not book to movie. That's movie to movie. Yeah, it's actor to actor too. Yeah, it is actor actor. I do. By the end, I did like the newer actor more than the original guy. I did. Yeah. I think he's awesome. I, I like them both. But that's once we realized that Dumbledore is kind of a cockmonger near the end. I stopped like, watching the movies after. He's the third basically one. allowing Harry to be. I just didn't watch him sacrificed. Anymore. Don't ask me why. The, the seven is good. Seven's <laughs> way good. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that's Did that's Simmons where start the trend with where they're doing final like book to movies and the final being two parts. And it's yeah, it started start it? that trend, but yeah. it's only a, yeah. But uh, that, that that's what I think. That's milking trendy. the franchise. That's what I think makes it uh, iffy though. Is they they just want to cash grab it. So that's that's why a I cash grab. Making a a final part of a. Of I gotta a tell you, though, Cameron, they're both ex- excellent. Well, it's not necessarily yeah. cash grab. They just have a lot more. Look, it's just like book, like Game of Thrones. If it's cash grab and it's good, then we're fine. If it's cash grab, just and for cash sucks. grab, it's probably going <laughs> to be bad. Game of Thrones season three and four are all book three. That ain't yeah, cash grab. That's a phenomenal book that deserves. It, two it, seasons it needed two seasons to tell the story. Right. That's why the. And then I, you can so argue long. that the last one of Harry Potter it needed. Those they needed two parts to really tell the story and, and do the fans a service, but then other movies started following that trend. Yeah, yeah, that's and true. then that's when it became a cash grab. Well, it was like, how can we all make more money? There's been two other series that have done that. I how wouldn't call we, that. A how trend. can we film a normal film's worth of content <laughs> but split it into two movies? I know we'll get that great <laughs> actress Kirsten Stewart to do even more uh, of her wonders. You know, you know. She sucks ass. I, I don't. I don't think she's that bad. Yeah, she's not funny. the worst, but she's probably like. Top three, <laughs> dude. There are so many worse <laughs> actors, dra- actresses than her. Name them. She's just been in bad movies. It's like Hayden Christensen. I would say the same thing. I don't think he's a bad actor. He may not be. He's not a great actor, but he's not a bad actor. There's a bad. There's bad actors, right, man? There's bad actors. Watch any Mormon local movie, you will see bad actors. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so, so Christian Stewart or Hayden Christensen being seen as bad actors, I think it's just incorrect i think they're just the the movies that they've appeared in have not been great and they have not been great i in mean them. We well maybe they should have the a little discretion of, then maybe they should we are and i think christian stewart's just fine at adventure yeah we land. are we are blessed with the amount of emotional depth and in to each panic of room characters. we have all panic sorts room. of emotion coming give from me her. a fucking break uh, i thought she was fine in that she was a kid but yeah, I'm trying had, to think of Christian Stewart movies that aren't Twilight that I've seen. She had range as a child. <laughs> no, but uh, I think if I was going to be a video game based movie, I think uh, it would be cool to have Metal Gear Solid. But the only problem with that is it's already a movie in its own form. Already. Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I say Half Life would be fun. Half Life would be actually kind of cool. Just try to try to make oh, it better than Doom. Oh, you know what'd be a, hard. You know it'd be a good movie actually if they filmed it in like a, in in. So Red Dead Redemption, but filmed in like a western style. That would be a fun movie to watch. 
like yeah. the, like an authentic western style but there's tons of authentic Western movies, and I don't know if Red Dead Redemption would add to the genre. No, but it'd be fun for people <laughs> who play the video game. I think they could pull it what? off, What? There's a million Westerns. There's literally a million <laughs> or, Westerns to or, watch. No, or what they could do is adapt the Red Dead Nightmare to, to film. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that, yeah, that is a Western. That wouldn't be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> there's not too many zombie Westerns, is there, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. You're right wide open not. market, rock star. That is, you're there. right. You're 100% right about that. That would add <laughs> something to the genre. And so it starts out with normal Red Dead Redemption and have it naturally progress to Red Dead Nightmare. Mm. And he's riding the four horses of the apocalypse. Okay. It'd be perfect. <laughs> Ooh, that, that's where it starts to go downhill. I don't think. <laughs> as fun as that was in the game. Uncharted wouldn't be bad, but it's still going into that same Tomb Raider territory, and it's also Tomb Raider went into the Indiana Jones territory that was yeah. before it. Um, Although Uncharted is supposed to be being made into a movie, yeah. I'm sure yeah. it's I'm sure it'll be great. There's a lot that they apparently yeah. have in the works, so yeah, yeah that works. We'll War- the Warcraft movie, it's got a good filmmaker behind it, but I, the trailer is bad. It's got that Nikolai <laughs> Waldo guy from Game of Thrones too. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he's that great. but <laughs> So hopefully it doesn't suck balls. I bet you it will, though. Oh, we should have predictions. What do you guys think the the Rotten Tomato score is going to be for that? For Warcraft? Yeah. 43%. 43? I'm going to say 15. 15? Yep. Uh, I'm pretty good at this. Normally after I watch it, though. Normally I'm like, this felt like about a 30. <laughs> Right, I'm lowballing the shit out of it. You're making Joe scribble some penises down real fast. No, I'm writing down. Yeah. Yeah. He's writing the guesses. One, one, one rating, one penis, one rating, one penis. <laughs> yeah. He does tallies and all the little tally marks are penises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's sad that we can believe that. Um, you said 15%, right? Yeah, 15. Won't be the worst uh, worst ever, but it'll be, it'll be up there. I'll say 52. 52%. Almost positive. Cameron? I don't know, man. <laughs> Dude, put it. You got one through 100. Just put a number down. Um, 55. <laughs> okay, so if it's, a, if it's a fresh movie, Cameron gets it. Okay. But Fuck you, in, in, the rotten, in the rotten categories, um, it's a fight. it'll be a fight to the death. Um, a brawl. And if it's really bad, Caleb twice is going to get it. <laughs> so basically, it's between you and So I. what other, what other, <laughs> we got that, what's the zombie game that you guys would play all the time? Or you play all the oh, time? Oh, Left 4 Dead? Resident Evil? <sighs> Fuck. Uh, the about? one that came with the PS4. Oh, uh, oh that, Last so. of Us? Last of Us. That one's being made into a movie. See, I could see yeah. that. That one, yeah. But it's already a movie in its but, form, isn't it? That's my problem with that it. That one doesn't really have a whole lot of cutscenes. Okay, Last of Us. What's the percentage on the Last of Us movie? And it, well, that one we don't know. Wait, sure wait, is it really gotta, adding to the zombie genre of movies? <laughs> we gotta see. We gotta yeah, see a trailer it for it at least. Yeah, I'd wait till the trailers uh, are out. Come on, you don't want to just put a guess based on source material. It may not be made into okay. a movie if it, All we, right. there's no trailers. Once it's confirmed, once it's definitely confirmed, we can do a pre preliminary. Okay guess and then once we see the trailer we get like an so allowance we've seen the of warcraft 10%. trailer though it's uh-huh. fucking bad what about that allowance of 10 percent. once we've seen the trailer up or down from where we voted it no, no no okay you know what we'll, we will wait until it is <laughs> until we get a trailer who i, I think it? you're right about who that. was it that's appearing in the warcraft movie I, re- I reckon oh yeah it's the dude from vikings he's in the warcraft movie wait which dude no um, you're right i was thinking uh it's uh Prince of, it's the, the main guy off of vikings yeah ragnar? Uh, ragnar. ragnar he's 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 in warcraft as a main part i uh, sorry guys i mixed yeah. up the uh gods of egypt movie and that's and jamie lannister one. he's in yeah. the gods of egypt yeah sorry i apologize <laughs> corrections no ragnar he he has some intense stares let's just say that he can stare down the orcs or whatever they orcs are. and humans <laughs> uh he must be playing out like that king guy that's in warcraft 3 then i'm assuming i just think he, maybe i just thought he was like the major role of the original yeah. warcraft games i just want his wife to be in there yeah God damn yeah. She, she is pretty hot. wife in the show in, or yeah, the show. In, in the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about his wife in real life. Mm, okay. Or in Warcraft. Or in Warcraft now, you're right. <laughs> I'm very limited in my knowledge of his wives. As <laughs> <laughs> I know one that's fake. <laughs> 
Uh, I might, know your wife well. <laughs> maybe it, it might turn into that Jon Snow situation where like Kit Harrington is actually dating the. Yeah, that, that, that was actually kind of cool. Snare. John Snare. Uh, so <laughs> so when I found that out, when I found there, that out, there. I'm like, well, at least now we know he'll still know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that's what she says when they're going at it. Dude, I wonder no, if like it gets nothing. really, I wonder if it gets really fucking old for him. <laughs> <laughs> like if she just brings it up all the time. You know nothing. <laughs> like, they're, stop they're, it. they're in an argument. You know yeah. nothing. If they're Harrington. living together. It's like. Hey, where'd you put the trash bags? <laughs> oh, you know nothing, John you know Snow. Nothing, ah, John that Snow. was funny. Like the first ah, time, very funny. Where are the Where's fucking bags? The fuck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, time for this right now. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking wilder, uh, <laughs> stupid wilding fuck. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's not really. Uh, you didn't really have an option, right, Joe? You didn't want a video game movie. Uh, I thought I think Halo is still a cool idea for a oh, movie. Okay. Just kind of the world that it's in, and its story is like thin enough. Uh, <laughs> it's just basically it just be well, an action movie. There's a Halo. There's aliens. There's a war. Yeah, but think and about it then there's way, the though. flood. Think like about, that's it, and that's all you have to cover. You can make a movie out of that. You no, know, think about it this way: with you know Stephen Hawking and his warnings and everything. How if we are to meet intelligent life? It, right now in real life, then they're most likely going to be hostile. So having us fighting aliens, that type of genre going on, might be popular this day and age if they do it well and not too super corny. And I would still think Peter Jackson's the right guy to do that. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, but and then Michael Bay does it. Now he doesn't give. No, a Michael Bay. That <laughs> dude, Michael Bay is the ruiner of childhoods, and he will do whatever. It's it all takes. about the money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to stay silent this time. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much covered it. Yeah, because Transformers was so good before. Uh, it wasn't. No, it I wasn't. But still. I don't really care for Ruiner of my shithole childhood. Like, oh, dude, I, he, he okay. molested the Ninja Turtles. Caleb. All right. So. I watched Transformers as a kid, and I swear to God, that was the number one argument against me when I, in like, I don't know, when, when the fuck that first Transformers movie came out, like high school or... Maybe late junior high. I don't know. But either way, I was like, that movie, like, it's not good. It sucks. And he's like, because you didn't you didn't watch Transformers as a kid. I'm like, yes, I fucking did. Yeah. And that movie sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and it, it had nothing to do. Like, I don't have this, like, bullshit love for my shows that I watched as a child either. So <laughs> I wouldn't give a shit if they ruined it. It's just a bad movie. <laughs> I don't know. Well, him. and the, the worst part is that's the best one, too. Like, if so, <laughs> <I've seen> <laughs> I, never, I never watched the sequels because that first one was bad. It, I think I've seen the so first bad. three. The second one is just bad. <laughs> yeah, I think. think I've see. been falling off with the with the sequels and stuff on movies. Like, I never saw Iron Man 3. I, I haven't seen Thor Iron Man 2. 3, and I should. Like, when I get disappointed in one, I just stop nowadays. It's not like with games yeah. or other forms of medium. Or like book four, Game of Thrones. I was like, eh. We can talk it, about it. Uh, but uh, that's, I don't know. So if they ever make one, <laughs> if they ever make another video game based movie, which they will, um, try to not have a sequel if it's bad. Okay. Mortal Kombat, <laughs> the second one, I feel like we can all agree is the worst. So Well, pe people are still arguing with me about like, I don't know, in the chat or something, I saw something like Joe's so wrong about the Mortal Kombat movie. And you know what? I am not wrong about that Mortal Kombat Dude, movie. Just wait until it we see awful. it again. Wait until you wait. see the second one, then you'll realize what they're saying. Oh, no, it's not bad in comparison. It's just bad. I don't believe in, like, going, well, that one's worse, and suddenly it puts the other one on a higher plane. It's just, it just long, goes down further. How long has it been since you've seen the original Mortal Kombat? I don't know. I saw it in high school. Dude, you might like it now. You I might, doubt that. I might like it you as might, a bad movie. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the reason I but like it. I can it. It's remember specific it's terrible, scenes that are bad. And that's why it's funny. They're bad. Bad, bad. It was so bad. Like, not funny bad? Just really, really cringeworthy? I might have laughed at it. But okay, funny well, okay. bad. Well, if it's funny, funny bad, bad doesn't raise go. the score. Yeah, it's still bad. <laughs> no, it'll still be bad. It'll just be, like, worth watching it. Because okay. it was funny. All right, all right. I can live with that. Like like Super Mario Bros. was worth watching once. Yeah, because which it was by shit. the way, <laughs> Bandrum won our thing, uh, and uh, we're gonna send him that DVD, and uh, we all need to sign it after we're done here. Oh right. yeah, the ultimate ego stroke. Yeah. Yes. He asked us to sign it. Signed, Cap I wasn't gonna sign it before because like I feel like me and you have like 
because we played 11 with him and 14 with him, it's like, oh, we know Bandrum. Like, yeah, we're like blood brothers. He's like, we, he's like a dude. Lives. He's like a dude that we know that we've never met, kind of. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was kind of like, oh, blood he wants us to blood. sign it. Oh, okay. All right. We can sign it. That's, that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, he's sending me, he said he sent me the movies in the mail. What movies? His the movie the, the that movies he's, that he's in. in. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm excited for those. Yeah, well, those are going to be part of my two two sixty or three sixty six. Suddenly, the, suddenly the year became one hundred less days. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. History of video games part two. Let's get to it. All right. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. Telstar by Coleco, with three different games. Telstar Tennis, with digital scoring, variable speeds. Telstar Hockey, each player controls a goalie plus a forward on the other side. Oops, a goal. And Telstar Singles Handball, a game you play yourself. Telstar Handball, Tennis, Hockey, all three at an exciting low price. For great family fun, hit your TV to a Telstar. The History of Video Games, Part 2. Attack of the Clones. Dead done. Yeah, so the first generation of video games console, as we all know, was started, at least we should know from last time, (laughs) was started uh, with the first uh, at-home console for a video game, the Magnavox Odyssey. Which, of course, came after numerous uh, technological advancements and... Games like Pong coming out, and of course the games that Pong was based on, um, a lot of sports simulation games, and mm-hmm. uh, you know Magnavox Odyssey is basically that. It had like uh, these little chips that you put in that you had to like put into the. It, it did something with the with the, the electronic signals and it created different games based upon these things. But the Magnavox Odyssey was basically this, this thing where it would have these games with this, with these white dots and you can have two player games on this thing. And, uh, the white dots would move around and you could play like basically like a ping pong sort of game and, uh, other similar types of games. And what you would do is it would plug into your TV, right? And then it came with these like little plastic overlays that you would put on the screen. So like the plastic overlay would have like the map. It would have a soccer field on the overlay oh. and you'd put it because, you know, the Magnavox is only giving you a black and white image. You'd put that <laughs> yeah. over the top of your TV and it would it 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 was able to you could use it with two different TV sizes at the time. And you just put that on your screen and then you'd play your game. Uh, based upon those things. Huh, I can see it now perfectly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, you know, you can always look those types of things up on YouTube because it is fascinating. Because, uh, yeah, the Magnavox is, is something special, that's for sure. Um, so there were a lot... Uh, this, this first generation of consoles, and there were a few more consoles, and we'll get into them in a bit, um, they were... Kind of characterized by the following things. Uh, games were native compos- components of consoles rather than based on external or removable media. So they would kind of come with the console. And if they weren't coming with the console, they would put in a chip that would just relay the console signal. So the game was in the console itself. It wasn't within any sort any of... Any cartridge. Any cartridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or or disc or anything like that. Um, the entire game play field occupied only one screen. Uh, you can like hook up different systems and play over the LAN. Nothing yeah, like that. No LAN uh, uh, players and objects would basically consist of very basic lines, dots, or blocks. Uh, and um, although it didn't start this way with this generation, slowly like Magnavox Odyssey like had a few different versions. And then other copycat systems started coming out that would be in color, but they would be basic colors, kind of like a a solid green or something like that, as opposed to just black and white, Uh, and either had single channel or no audio. And Magnavox had no audio. At least their first uh, Magnavox Odyssey had no audio. Uh, And also, uh, they had discrete transistor-based digital game logic gates. If you can tell me what a logic gate is, I will give you a starburst. <laughs> so can you use that say it in that sentence again? Okay. It used discrete transistor-based digital game logic gates. 
Uh, it's for know. it's the logic of the. Com- yeah, the logic. Chip, the chipboard. Uh, the logic the of the computer, like the uh, opponent, what its moves are. Okay. No, it's the logic. It's the it's the the logic gate. Ah, I can't. Can't just say the same thing over again. <laughs> I know I can't. It has something to do with the programming of the computer itself, um, of the chip, of uh, the game. Okay, Caleb Craig. I'm not even going to make a guess. You're not even going to make a guess, no. Caleb Twice? Um, yeah, just like the, the yeah, what Cameron said. Okay, well, what I said. I'll give it to Cameron. Um, the yellow one? Jeez. Just for being in the in the realm uh, it's it, a logic gate is an idealized or physical device implementing a Boolean function. That is, it performs a logical operation on one or more logical inputs that produces a single logical output. So in other words, A equals this, A plus B equals the same thing, and so on. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what that is. I was when I was when I was researching this stuff. Uh, on the grade website of Wikipedia, I uh, that was one of the things where I was like, "What the fuck does that even mean?" And I had to look it up and I put the definition here. But yeah, so <laughs> it's 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 a digital console, is what it's saying. Yeah. Um. So how many units did the Magnavox Odyssey initially sell? The Magnavox Odyssey. I remember the commercial for that. Hmm. Um. Not, not, I wasn't alive when it came out. I remember seeing it, though. Um, I'm going to go with 8,000 units. No, let's go with, let's go with 13,000 units. 13,000 units. Okay. What do you guys say? Uh, 30,000 units. I'm going to go 10. 10? Okay. 30,000 units is closest. This is 330,000 <laughs> units. Whoa. A lot more than and I thought. It's, it's more than the arcade games were selling at the time, yes, but... But for a home console, this was actually kind of like not that great of a success. Well, it was the first one. How much so. did it cost? Two hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Uh, one one ninety-nine. That's my guess. I'm gonna go three hundred. Three hundred dollars. What? Totally let's it. see. What did you have it? Two hundred and fifty-eight. One ninety-nine. Yeah. Okay, it's one hundred dollars. <laughs> is what it was at. Uh, it could be powered with uh, six C batteries, which were oh, included. Man. C and batteries are like the most common <laughs> ever. <laughs> and an optional <laughs> AC power supply was sold separately. Uh, it did not have sound, as I said. Uh, it used a type of removable printed circuit board, uh, a game card that inserts into a slot similar to a ROM cartridge slot, but once again, it was like still native to the system itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, the system was sold with a translucent plastic overlays, like I said, which simulated color graphics. Um, and uh, it also came with dice, poker chips, and score sheets to help keep up score, <laughs> play money, and game boards, uh, much like a traditional board game. And I think it had, I want to say, I think it was like 25 or 20, it's uh, high 20s, the amount of games total that were ever on the Odysseys. And the Odysseys ran from 1973, and I believe they were discontinued in 1970. Um, I think they were discontinued, yeah, 1975. Um, so, so not eighties, like I was saying, yeah, not, not, not the eighties, not for the, not for the Odyssey. There was another system that Magnavox put out in the oh, second okay. generation of video games, uh, later on. Um, it was also designed to support an add on peripheral, uh, peripheral, the first ever commercial video light gun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first zapper. So, uh, <laughs> It detected light from the television screen, um, though <laughs> it says here you could also have pointed it at a, another source of light, like a lamp, <laughs> and it would have counted it. <laughs> so it could have, it, it was, uh, it was kind of thwarted. Now, how many? Thwarted. Now, remember the system sold 330,000 units. Uh-huh. How many units did the light gun sell? Go. Three hundred and thirty thousand is the is the amount of <laughs> that they sold, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna go with a hundred thousand. Then a uh, hundred thousand says Cameron. Mm. Can't take forever on these things. 
I know. Uh, I'll, I'll go with uh, 170,000. 170, 170,000. I'll go 70K. It's 20,000 units, gentlemen. Ah, uh, not as much. Yeah, not nearly as much. And it only it was used with four compatible games for the for the thing. Uh, and by the way, that light gun was the first involvement of a little company called Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo Zapper. Yeah. For the first involvement of Nintendo in video games, uh, oh. according to the International Journal of Computer Game Research, in 1971, Nintendo had, even before the market of the first home console in the United States, an alliance with Magnavox to d- d- develop and produce optoelectric guns for the Odyssey, uh, since it uh, was similar to what Nintendo was able to offer to the Japanese toy market in the 1970s. So, yeah, that was Nintendo's first thing, was creating that gun. They're in. (laughs) That's right. Um, So Magnavox settled a court case against Atari. Just a little bit more information on Magnavox. For patent infringement in Atari's design of Pong, as it resembled a tennis game for the Odyssey. Remember that the guys who made Atari saw like a prototype of the Magnavox and were like, let's do this. Yeah. And they got it out faster. Um, it resembled a tennis game for the Odyssey. Over the next decade, Magnavox sued other big companies such as Coleco, Mattel, Seaberg, and Activision and either won or settled each suit. Damn. So Magnavox basically was like, we own video games, motherfucker. They're the true <laughs> Americans. Yeah. We're going to sue the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> That's right. Sweet. Um, in 1985, Nintendo sued Magnavox and tried to invalidate Bear's, uh, Pat Bear is the guy who made the machine, patents by saying that the first video game was uh, Tennis for Two, built in 1958. And the court ruled that this game did not use video signals and could not qualify as a video game. Remember, we were talking about, like, Mm -hmm. what constitutes as a video game last time? Uh, As a result, Nintendo lost the suit and continued paying royalties to Sanders Associates. Over 20 years, Magnavox won more than $100 in various patent lawsuits and settlements involving the Odyssey-related patents. God, it doesn't even matter that their console didn't sell. They're like, fuck it, we'll just sue you and get the money anyway. Yes. (laughs) exactly it's nuts isn't it yeah it's crazy um oh yeah so it was a total of 27 games distributed uh, on 12 different game cards that were released for the magnavox odyssey uh all of them were developed by magnavox in 1972 except for interplay interplanetary voyage which was developed in 1973 and almost all of them i was looking at the list and i was going to list them but they were all sports games basically pretty much yeah Yeah. boy uh, unfortunately, the Magnavox Odyssey uh, never really caught on with customers, possibly because of its limited functionality and possibly because there was another uh, little little at-home video game coming around the corner here. Uh, in 1974, Magnavox was bought by a company named Philip, uh, and they were put to work making newer and newer versions of the console, and that's kind of what they did for this whole first generation. So the first competitor... The first competitor for Magnavox in Japan, mm. September 12, 1975, uh, a company named Epoch released Japan's first TV console. And uh, <clears throat> I will give a starburst to the man who could tell me what the second ever home console was. <laughs> it's a hard one. Oh, God. Just think sports. It's always what it is. It's named after a sport. It the may or may not be. It's named after sports. So this is like Tennis for Two, the console. <laughs> Camera says Tennis for Two, the console. What do you say? Oh, gosh. I'm going to guess Racket. baseball related. I don't know. Okay. Tennis for Two, Two. <laughs> tennis for Two, Two. Oh, Cameron. Hmm. Is it like the tennis player four thousand? <laughs> I'll give it to both you guys. Woohoo! Oh, what's with the yellow? Will you give him pink? What is this? I gave him yellow. I don't want to no, give yellow. Give me orange. Jesus You're holding Christ. on to this forever. What are you? What are you a child? Jesus! Oh, pink. Do you not like it the yellow ones? It tastes like sugar. That's what I'm it gonna, tastes like. I'm gonna sink the pink and Cameron's All right. gonna watch it. The first console uh, created in Japan and the second ever at home digital console. 
uh, for video games was the TV tennis electro tennis. Oh. <laughs> yeah. TV tennis electro that tennis. That sounds like a fun date. Which night. is a home version of Pong, which came Pong. several months before the release of Home Pong in North America. So they created they created Pong for the uh, for the arcades before they brought it to the home consoles. Uh, a unique feature of the TV tennis electro tennis is the wireless console. The console Ooh. did not have to hook up to your television. Wow! What? How? In what way could this have been possible? Was it a projector? Cameron guesses projector. Oh, God. Man, I don't know. Guess something. Ah, fuck. You don't, it, Caleb, you guess. You don't have to be in order. You can just shout it out. Um, It was a TV. Caleb Craig? Ah, God damn it. Uh, just say time machine. Get it over with. <laughs> time machine. Uh, Fuck. I'm going to... something. It's got to be something like a projector. Like Cam Kid said, I don't know. I'm okay. not sure. I'm not gonna give it to any of you guys. This is uh, this is one I think you guys, if you if you thought about it for a little while, could have guessed. It used wireless functioning through the UHF antenna. Oh, through the antenna. Yeah. Wow. You remember when TVs had antennas? A yes. very long time ago. Yeah. I didn't even think about it that. It wasn't even that long ago, dude. So it used yeah, a radio signal. Yeah, basically. Yeah. A UHF yeah. signal to, to go to the to project television. graphics and stuff. To the yeah. Television. I bet you that looks just stellar on that TV. I think that's well, like a fucking like cool squares, thing to do. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I never would have got that. Yeah. I think we should have that fucking now. Like some sort of signal yeah. that you can like... Put the console. You don't have to There's plug it in. There's a reason why we're not doing that now. <laughs> well, it's the... Quality. And maybe interference, possibly. Interference yeah, microwaves are a similar wavelength to radios, so that's why you're when we're watching Game of Thrones and someone turns the microwave on, we can't fucking watch Game of Thrones anymore. <laughs> it's because they interrupt each other. And we get hammered with interference. That right. is a cool idea, though, for sure. All right, guys. What are you doing? On 3, 2, 1, you're going to tell me what the next... Home console was three, two, one. Oh, sorry, uh, ColecoVision. Well, Atari made it. It was Pong. Uh, uh, just Pong. It was just Pong, guys. It was a console. Remember that the consoles had the game in it. Yeah, well, but when they yeah. were first, they, the first launched. one had a bunch So of this games. is Pong the console that played Pong the it video was, game. Yeah, it was only yeah. Pong. No, it played Atari. We the video it was game. the smash hit Home Pong in the Christmas. Of 1975. Oh, good year. Uh, it was a ball and paddle kind of thing that ignited an interest in video games at the time. If you... People always talk about fucking Pong in the 70s, right? Yeah. That's like the thing, is yeah, Pong. It's on that 70s show. You remember yeah. when they played Pong? Yeah. At least for the U.S. Uh, US citizens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least for U.S. citizens, like Pong was the thing. Uh, and Pong, basically after Pong came out and was its huge success that it was, everybody was just copying Pong. Uh, our first copy of Pong came from the UK, uh, and uh, it also copied some aspects of the Magnavox Odyssey, so thank you, uh, Britain. Uh, <laughs> this was the Minotone TV Master. It also came with paddles and a light gun, like the Magnavox did. Uh, the next one was the Telestar Colortron which was produced by Coleco. Uh, and that was also a Pong clone that ran a series of consoles from 1976 to 1978. Guys, what is the name? The next one, the, the, the last major console of this generation came from Nintendo. What is the name of Nintendo's first console? The real first console from Nintendo. Oh, God. What's Pong in Japanese? <laughs> I have Pong no idea. Ponga. Ponga. <laughs> Ponga. Come on, guys. God, we can't guess this. This is sick. No, it's not sick. I thought you were a Nintendo fan. Come on. Uh, Real Nintendo fans would know this. <laughs> um. Oh, shit. I know what it is. Then say it. I won't say it. Yet. It was actually the biggest... Uh, at home console uh, for that first generation. Shit. What the fuck? Oh, the Famicom. No. Oh, is that later? <laughs> yeah, way later. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, no, that's 80s. That's like late 80s, isn't it? Yeah. 
We're still 75? Yeah. We're, we're 77 here. 78. Oh, fuck, I don't know. I don't know any of them beyond that, <laughs> I don't think. What about just the fammy? <laughs> just the fammy? Just the fammy. The f- All right, guys. <laughs> it was called the... Nintendo Color TV game. Uh, I know <laughs> Nintendo Color sounds familiar, but then I just... I, yeah, yeah, just game, game Boy, Boy Color, right. Yeah. Uh, it was Color the most successful TV console game. of that first generation, uh, and it sold 3 million units. Damn. The highest for, for any of those things uh, during that time. So at the same time as these at-home consoles were being produced, arcades were being filled with uh, with games like Pong and other things uh, by Atari as well as some other companies. Um, so there was another, basically this was, this was creating another video game surge in a, in a different part of the market. Uh, now arcades already existed with physical games like pinball. Mm-hmm. That wasn't a computer based yeah, thing. Like arcades yeah. were already a thing. Uh, but starting with Pong in 1972, uh, other companies like Ramtech, Allied Leisure, Williams, Chicago Coin, and a little company called Midway uh, started producing Midway. coin-operated arcade game machines following Atari's success. Um, not long into the market, these companies began to produce more than just Pong copycats, but also racing games, dueling games, and target shooting games. So I think like the real... The real forward stuff was in the arcade games. It wasn't so yeah. much at the at the yeah. home. Like the at home seems like just a trial and error. Who can outdo who? Yeah, and then we're gonna thin of. the hell out of the market and have yeah. three consoles in the end. It, it's funny how it all just starts with tennis. Like tennis yeah. turns into pong. Yeah, like oh, the most exciting sport ever. Tennis. And then people <laughs> sue each other over it. It's bloodbath at yeah. tennis. So some of the hits from this <laughs> from this uh, part of gaming history. They include Grand Track 10, Tank, Wheels. These are all big uh, big arcade games at the time. Gunfight and Seawolf. Um, so uh, what was another? There was another market. Not just, not just arcades. Not just the at-home consoles. But what other gaming market was uh was kind of having its roots right now uh pc gaming pc gaming that's right yeah. so it's close it's at home home guess. Games. yeah this is uh it wasn't really at home the pcs yeah they weren't com- really pcs like we take now yeah computers weren't well then they're they not were PCs micro then, they were microprocessors he got closest though and no one pc said stands for personal computer that's so right. that was before, politically correct. and these were and these were the university's computers. Yeah. As we so, all as we know like you see the vector computer the vector gra- uh, graphic <laughs> stuff that started with the uh, before this first generation of video like games. Yeah, Cameron's messing with his hair. <laughs> he looks like a moron. Um so <laughs> computers at this time weren't really using the vector graphics that some computers were before all this started. They were mostly using things that um there was things like Microsoft Basic, which was a programming language, mm-hmm. uh, and and all those things and other similar kind of stuff. I don't really know that much about this, <laughs> but all they could all they could uh, put out were text, right? That's like all they were made the to do. The text-based games. That's that's uh, that's where we're getting Zork. into right now. So they were going to outgrow the game Space War that was started on on uh, computers. And basically various creative programmers and there were these little private magazines that were being put out. Uh, they were kind of creating this weird market uh, of games. And, and now at the time, some of these games, and I'm not sure if all of them, I tried to look into this and find out more. Some of these games would be like printed in books for people to program into their own computers. So like they would take Oh, that's the, crazy. You would yeah, that's like, nuts. Yourself. Yeah. I guess so, that's probably the best way to do it if you're going to mass sell, quote unquote, your game. Yeah, I'm not sure when the eight and a half fl- floppy came around. I, I have no idea when they could transfer <laughs> information. I really don't. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, some notable games include a Star Trek game from 1971. I'm pretty sure it was not a Star Trek game that like had the licensing for Star Trek. <laughs> uh, Hunt the Wampus, a game called Empire. <laughs> 
and a game called Colossal Cave Adventure in 1976. Colossal yes, these were all text Adventure. input games. Text-based games. Yeah, and these are a type of game that I've never played. Have you guys ever played a text-based game? The only one that I've ever played is called Zork. Yes, I played one. Um, isn't technically, no, there was a one on strongbad.com, whatever it is. There was a text-based game where you input text commands, but there was still graphics. I don't know if that counts. It does. It does. It's still a text-based game. Uh, these early ones from the first half of the 1970s, basically with the computer stuff, it was just text. Yeah, entirely text. It was the black and white text, and that's that's all there was. Um, later on, with uh, with other computers coming in they started having the graphics mixed with the input the text inputs um notable games from then included moria oblite and avatar oblite yeah um and those were kind of adventure games that uh you you input text and it was basically like <laughs> ultima if you've ever seen videos of the original ultima or a calabeth or whatever the <laughs> fuck it's called um, that's what it was just you know, a little bit more primitive than that even. Um, so there is a very important game, uh, that created a very important genre. This was Colossal Cave Adventure, 1976. What game was Colossal Cave Adventure primarily drawing from as an inspiration? What game? Yes. Colossal so Colossal Cave. Cave Adventure was drawing from what real life game? Wait, real life game? Yeah. Cameron says spelunking. <laughs> I mean like a physical game. Like a board game or what are you what are you talking here? I'd say like a real game. Like a man's game is like what A man's saying, game, right? not a video game. Don't be this is a, a badly boy. worded question. I'm realizing that. Yeah. You guys can figure this out. A real game. This like game a, was a, called Colossal Cave Adventure. It was a text-based adventure game. What was it pulling inspiration from? Uh, Hide and seek. Well, that's a good guess. <laughs> Hide and seek. Okay. I'm going to say... Hmm. Oh God! Hopscotch. That's that's what. Hopscotch. <laughs> yeah. A text-based version of hopscotch. Oh, isn't this so fun? Oh uh, wait, no, it sucks ass. God, I dude, I don't fucking know. All right, well, there's a little tabletop role-playing game called Dungeons and Dragons. That oh my God! Wow. I was gonna say Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> and then you were like, "It's a real game." Oh, well, I'm like, no, I mean, I don't it's know not, what you fucking mean it's by It's not that. digital. I'm sorry. I knew you guys were gonna get pissed at me when I like finally explained what I was trying Cameron, to say. Cameron, throw your coffee on his face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and. Uh, so, yeah, he created basically the first sort of RPG. That's awesome. Video game. Yeah. He created it as a text-based game in the computer. It's Fucking called Colossal shit, Cave Adventure. Man. Later Fucking on, shit. the games Moria and Avatar would both pull on that same aspect where it's, yeah, it's what we refer to as like a text-based RPG game. Yeah. And it was pulling from Dungeons & Dragons, the art, the other type of yes, RPG from, game from the classic dunces the, and dragons, the tabletop <laughs> RPG games. And he kind of also uh, mixed it with the high fantasy of J.R.R. Tolkien. And, uh, yeah. And it include like inventory based puzzle solving. Um, and it, yeah, that, that was a huge type of game. Like it's a big part of our history. I don't believe it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, later on they started uh, doing more, impressive graphics but we only go to 1979 in this first generation so we're not gonna get into that so in closing in uh, 1977 ga video games both at home and abroad began to lag in sales possibly due to a crowded market and possibly due to electronically enhanced pinball games that's actually what it said it said they were like uh, really like the pinball game started to like get awesome <laughs> you could like stick your dick in them and they were like oh <laughs> monster match uh, uh, but that you know that lag was basically like a one and a half year two year lag oh, or maybe it was just too crowded of a market or something with the, i bet with you the, it was with the arcade games um and the crappy pong uh, recreations in Everywhere. the whole market yeah but that would all change with 
the game Space Invaders yeah. in 1979. Yeah. Fucking Space Invaders. What company made Space Invaders? Atari. Fucking shit. Yeah, Atari. it's probably Atari. <sighs> it's either them or Namco. I think it's Atari, though. Caleb Craig, you get... Never mind. I you said, said probably yeah, Atari. Atari. Midway, motherfucker. Oh, is Midway? it Midway? Yeah. <sighs> Midway Games. Yeah. 1979 wow. Space Invaders. And uh, also... I know Atari has a version of Space Invaders. Yeah. Like, what the shit? So next time... They could just keep names. Next time we talk about the history of video games, we will be going into the second generation of video of video game consoles Ooh. and going all about that stuff. Wow. All right. Well, gentlemen, do we have any news? Uh, No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i don't know maybe okay i guess we don't have any news this week Dude, shall we, we get are, fat we are the worst at finding news like uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, yeah like who cares i just uh, there's so many other news gaming shows he's re- he's recording this yeah i, I am recording I'm this yeah that. we're going Okay, guys, it's time for getting fat <laughs> all right caleb craig how have your uh weekly or yearly goals been going eh eh I've been reading, uh, I've been watching movies, trying to catch Wait, up. who won? The most recent one that I've oh, been um, oh, trying to, uh, that I've watched, I think, was Chicken Little. Rewatching that one. And why are you always rewatching movies, man? It's because I gotta rewatch them to, like, watch all these animated <laughs> movies. Might as well get the... Ones. Yeah, but I thought it was, like, a lifetime goal, so you would get rid of the ones that you haven't seen in a long time. Or well, never. Seen. I ha- I only saw Chicken Little once, like a year after it came out. Okay, I didn't remember it like at all. There were funny parts in that movie okay. that I forgot about. I'm good. just I'm like you have this goal, but you're it's never great, watching but... new movies. You're always watching old. I I am watching or new watching movies. like new movies for you. Yeah, I am. I'm trying to collect them and okay. then watch them. Collect them in what way? Uh, I've I'm been basing. adding them to like a bunch of cues. <laughs> on my various streaming services and then watching them when I get a chance. Nice. I don't know if that's collecting, but we it all is know collecting. How, how it Caleb gives me the ability to surf his cues and just look yeah, at it. Dude, I fucking it's movie not a choice, man. I get trapped in the one. void. Without ever actually watching one, he just likes to browse. Yeah. Dude, and see what possibilities there are. Dude, there are millions of possibilities and it is a fucking trap and it is why I spent a year of my life being trapped by fucking Netflix. Okay. And yet, still beating me in trophies. That's yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah. A lot of couch you. time. Yeah. <laughs> couch for life. And half that year was actually just trying to find something to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> There's not really millions of options. There's like 20, maybe maybe two or 300 good and ones. You know what's funny? He'll still just default to watching an anime show instead of watching a movie. That's not true. I watch movies. You watch Chicken Little. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's a fucking movie. I know, but it's one you've already seen before. That's it's a I'm feature getting. film, dude. It is. I know. It's a I'm not. Film. I'm not arguing that. But if I were to watch Chicken Little, it'd be a new thing because I've never seen it before. Really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not super great, but there are funny parts. I'm not denying that. But there's just so many good movies to like, great movies to go see that I still haven't seen yet. Yeah. Yeah. Or movies considered great, at least. Caleb uh, Schweiss, how have you been doing? Uh, well, I am getting fatter, as always. I've just been super lazy, <laughs> junk fooding it up. So, fuck that. I'm not worried about that too much. Um, school's going pretty well for me. I'm enjoying that. I'm uh, getting pretty good grades. Finals week is coming up. I'm glad to finally be getting that out of the way so I can just enjoy the grind over the summer. <laughs> um, <sighs> I haven't been reading very much. I was reading uh, Game of Thrones again. And then you just stopped? Yeah, and then I stopped. I was reading a bunch of it at work, but then I started doing homework at work, so. Oh, well, if you could do it there, that's nice. Yeah, and let's see. Getting paid to do homework. <laughs> he gets paid to freaking watch YouTube movies and watch Caleb play Twitch, so yeah. It's true. All I true. wouldn't advertise it. I would not say that over the air. Like, yeah, I'm not doing shit at work. <laughs> yeah, they know. They know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an ex-boss. Joins him in doing some of that shit. 
So yeah, I've been playing a lot of board games and stuff like that. Like I've learned card games out the ass the last little while. Golf, spades, I know how to play again. Hearts, I know how to play again. All sorts of games. We've been just playing all wow. sorts of shit. Games? And, yeah, just it's games. fun. I love games. I love them, obviously. Uh, so I, I don't remember what my other goals were. I know it was get in shape, do well in school, read. You had the 366, but you gave up. I could still talk about what I watched, though, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what I, have you watched recently? Did I watch anything this week? Well, I watched uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. I think that was a couple weeks ago, but classic horror movie. Well, not really horror, more sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. I kind of want to counter it and watch the freaking Counter Reeves one, but I kind of <laughs> don't at the same time. And then I watched Clerks. That was great. Clerks is a good one. Um, First Hunger Games movie. It was good. Nice. Yeah. Cameron? Cameron? I was trying to find a Caleb's Facebook page because he rates movies all the time there. Um, so for me and my goals, um, getting in shape. <sighs> How's that going? It's about <laughs> what we all say. <laughs> I just, yeah, you know, I, actually, fat. what I wanted to do is challenge Caleb to get ready for a marathon. So I want to. I want not a marathon. <laughs> Holy shit! What am I saying? Not a marathon. Five k. A five k. No one in their right mind runs a marathon. Let's be clear here. No. <laughs> Fucking insanity. Five k. We've done one before, Caleb. Um, uh, so I want to see if you are man enough to do one again and get ready for it. You know what's funny is that uh, my work wants to do one over the summer. It's like a triathlon. Well, five k. No, 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 no triathlon. We're doing a straight up five k where we register. And everything, and we just go run. Well, this we one's like a 5K it. with a obstacle course, is what I'm saying, though. No. Like it's wow. I want to do an that, illegitimate too much 5K. for Cam Cam. No, no, I want to do a legitimate 5K, not some fictional 5K that may or may not <laughs> happen from 5K. work. <laughs> Unless your work actually puts it on online, and anyone can register to do it. Yeah, you can register to do it. Fictional All right, 5K. so 5K, we're going to have, next time, next week, we're going to have it picked. We're going to be registered, and we're going to be preparing to run. Yeah, I think I'm going to kick game. back into insanity. I'm oh, gonna really? The diet. Yeah, I'm going to start that Monday. I think. You're going to do the diet for insanity as well? Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way it really works. Anyway. No, it is. like, And you feel like ass if you don't do the diet. <laughs> like, you just feel like a disgusting object. Yeah, like you... eating the betas before the workout. Yeah, <laughs> you're just <laughs> such like, a bad idea. Oh, did you do that? <laughs> My body. We've done it. Yeah, yeah, we've done it. Oh, why? So bad. <laughs> You just want to Stupidity. feel like a, a greasy motherfucker. Did you feel the right. grease like immediately go through you? It's we like, you, it out. no, if you eat it in the morning and work out at night, you will still feel it. Yeah. This oh. workout makes you feel bad for eating anything. So yeah. You just have to get enough to not die in your sleep. And that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I want to try that. So I agree, Cameron. We should shoot for that. All right. Shoot for 5K. 5K. We're going to be working out and getting our bodies ready to go. So let me ask you, Cameron, how's the uh, finance going? Finances. You're actually keeping track now? I was keeping track before. He just saw it all going down. He knew it was going though. Yeah. That's that's the difference. (laughs) I see that I'm poor. I just see it. (laughs) I keep track track of my being poor. Um, And then the book reading, I'm still on track with that. I've... Let's see. Looking for something new to read. And that's exactly... Yeah. What I wanted to do is I want to ask our listeners, what book should I read next? I have three unused credits on Audible... So what down, book down. should I read next, guys? Questions from us to do you. you. Do you want to ask? Why do you have to ask the audience? Why can't you just ask us? Because I want them to choose. I don't want you guys to choose. <laughs> you should read the... I'm giving them If options. they don't give you anything... Oh, you you should finish the, finish the goddamn books we read for book club. Read Genghis. Uh, <laughs> read the Genghis series by I, the guy who did the Emperor books. It's good. Did you read the 1Q84? No, I did not read one. That one's a good one. That one is a good one. I enjoyed that. that. That was a good read. But I'm, I'm for our audience that, members, Joe. I want them to choose. Goodread.com. Plug. You want the audience <laughs> to pick. Okay. All right. Just put Give a them some thing fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> some like Final Fantasy or, or no, no Diablo, Diablo fan fiction. fiction. Diablo like, fan oh, fiction. Yeah, they're gonna go. How are you going to find Diablo fan fiction? Barnes and Noble. There's real An Diablo actual fiction. published respectable book. <laughs> What if it's in Barnes and Noble? Is that respectable oh, yeah. enough? Well, Cameron, the, if you say fan fiction, they might just like pull out Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> no, thank you. No, no, you no, sure? thank you. I watched the movie and it was not great. <laughs> well, what did you expect? I expected it to be more erotic than it actually was. 
Oh, is that what you went to see it for? I've been spoiled by other erotic movies. <laughs> well, and everybody senses. said it was kind of bad. And I was like, <laughs> I kind of, I got to watch this movie. Cause like a bunch of people have seen this movie and like, I just need to see what it is. And I watched it and it was not great. Disappointing. Yeah. That was one of my 366 this year. Pretty was sure. it? Yeah. Was it one of the earlier ones? Yeah, I think it was. Okay. But. Um, is that it as far as you go, Cameron? Oh, I've been, is, I was trying to keep track of my money too, but that's going great. Yeah, yeah is it? That's yeah. good. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I watched no movies this week. Oh my wow. god! We don't have, get. Oh, we don't. Have, oh, that's like you don't have to listen episode. to a Joe Rand. I that's watched. Like, I read a screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing. There's a movie in my mind. Read the screenplay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I just did not have time to watch a movie. This How week. good was the cinematography in the screenplay? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh man, this scene have is so Have you seen good. the movie before? It was so surreal. It's as, it's as if I was like there, but somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> man, I need to see this. <laughs> I'm sorry, you legally can't. I, I was telling you earlier this week, I'm like, I, I get to read these screenplays and I get to say that I can't talk about them. And that's like, I'm legally not allowed to talk about him, but bring, I love that saying up. that I'm not exactly. legally allowed to talk about exactly. something. Exactly. He, he brings that up just oh, so that he can say one, that. Uh, is that the one you're talking about with the... Uh... He wasn't talking about anything, Caleb. <laughs> Caleb because was, he's not allowed to talk about it. I wasn't talking about shit. <laughs> he's barely face, allowed uh... to say that he's not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. He didn't even want me to mention it at all. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, get the car battery. Get the water in the <laughs> yeah. rags. We're, we're finding oh, out. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. How long? How long does it take for Joe to break? I'll it wouldn't take me that long, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about now. Oh my goodness. Didn't actually want to hear about it. Just wanted to break you. Yeah, dude. I've just like last week. I thought it was going to be my big week of school stuff, but it's just still going, still going. And it's uh, yeah. And then yesterday, of course, the nine hour dirge of Cerberus run. <laughs> and uh, I decided yesterday just to watch some TV before going to bed. I didn't want to watch a movie. What'd you watch? Watch The Wire. Yeah. Uh, how is that? It's good. In fact, I'll end season one and allow people to catch up so we can watch it together because it's good. So you and I will watch it? <sighs> yeah, me and you will watch it and then other people will come in for 20 minutes and then leave. And then Caleb will just be like... <sighs> of course, now that you have a car, you might be able to... Uh, yeah, you guys fucking watch Sopranos without me, you dicks. Dude. I wanted to watch that, but no. You still can. You got time. We're not done. <laughs> Yeah, you it's are. Them no, we're not. Forever to freaking watch. Sopranos. You have like the last season left. If the you're not done, it's huge. Well, well it's, it's, it's fucking, twice as long. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's like almost twice as long. Uh, but we're on like I think we have five or six. And you guys are left. taking twice as long to watch them as you used to. It's a long fucking show because we're trying to catch up on Game of Thrones. Another reason why I haven't watched any movies. Yeah, we need to watch what is it, sixteen episodes of that tonight? before tomorrow. <laughs> You is guys that when ready? it comes on tomorrow? Is, yeah. yeah. Ah, fuck. Dude, I'm not going to be able to get to it. I, uh, I've i told myself I'm not going to do it without watching season five again. And uh, I'll watch a lot of season four tonight. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait before I watch it. I'll probably watch it next week. So when there's two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's even better. When, when there's two. two. Oh, that's going to suck because a bunch of people at work are like super into it. They're just going to want to talk to you about it. I don't care, Caleb. I don't care if you go to my place and watch it on HBO now while I'm at work. Do you mind if I do so with no pants? <laughs> you know, I will be there. As long so as I don't I'm... know about it. <laughs> like, Caleb films himself watching it with no pants. Uh... <laughs> leaves it on and leaves it in Joe's room. <laughs> I know you said you didn't want me. But yeah, guys, I don't care if you want to use my place for the premiere. I really don't. I just will not be doing it. Oh, jeez. I kind of do. <sighs> and I will, I but I can work. Don't. But I don't care. I'll be there. I'll be watching it regardless. I must watch. Yes. I like Why are you touching my elbow? Cameron is stroking <laughs> Caleb's elbow. My What's weenus. the name, What's the name of the app? Yeah. His weenus. Yeah. I'm weenus. Stroking, his stroking weenus. my weenus. <laughs> nice and soft there. Yeah. yeah. You so need to hot. you need to moisturize. And uh <laughs> I did uh He likes the friction. In my yeah. In my gearing up for my trip, I, I did uh, walk. I had one day where I had time to do my walk that I was hoping to do every day. Uh, and that's a four mile walk. So, mm. yeah, I'm going to be walking eight miles a day. So I figured I should do four miles a day before that. Yeah. Um, 
without weight on my back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did right before the last 5K Cameron and I ran. I ran a 5K just in practice, and I was destroyed. <laughs> and then I ran the 5K destroyed, so I was, like, even more wrecked afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> but walking's not too bad. No, it's all walking. And yeah, that was... I'm looking forward to... Dude, I'm looking forward to, like, three days. Just, just three hours of walking and then reading time. That's all it is, dude. Yeah? Yeah. That sounds like a dream right now. You're going to load up a ton of books <laughs> on your Kindle and just... You're gonna yeah, bring I already it. have a ton of books on my Kindle. You're going to bring a camcorder and just record the experiences of Joe? Uh, release it as a documentary? A documentary? A documentary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fancy documentary. Yeah, it's a documentary. Yeah. Uh, I thought about it, but unless I like get a GoPro or something, which I can't afford, um, I don't, I don't want to carry around that extra weight. Then you have to have battery for the fucking thing. <laughs> so I got to carry the charger and I got to carry, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really have room for my camera. You going to do a journal then? <laughs> yes, and record my thoughts. Yes. Yeah, let's bring it back empty. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I wrote the, a The first page will be like halfway filled and then the rest will just be like pictures of dicks. I do. <laughs> I do have a, uh, I do have a screenplay. I've been I've been poking around in my head that I've been thinking about starting. I'll give you a good time. Um, yeah. Ah, shit. When when will you be what, what, down here? <laughs> Are you taking Sasha with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a solo trip. It'll be like the last two or three days, Caleb. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I guess that does make sense. I'm going from up. going from Idaho to Nephi. <laughs> Well, if it's a weekend, maybe I'll, uh... I told you guys to, like, take a week off each and just join me, but... Y'all wimps. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Caleb does not care. Yeah, I don't care. Well, I'm not talking Did you do a week either. off, Cameron? A week off? Probably not. How much vacation time do you get a year? Um, I get my vacation time again in July. How much time, though? Um, two weeks, I think. Wait, how much vacation time do you have right now? Zero. Oh, really? It renews in July. You did the th same thing Caleb Schweiss did, where he just takes off a day every once in a while, just for kicks? No, I had to take off sometime every now and then for family issues, for oh, okay. going to a concert with you guys, for... Oh, week, I went to work. <laughs> I was pretty fucking wrecked the next just day. Just take a sick week. I still went to work the next day, too. Oh, well, then why did you take a day off? Because we, we, we went down... We went somewhere that required us to take some time off of, uh, off of work. Or is it Reno? Reno or Vegas, one of the So, uh, yeah, I have a week and a day, I think, right now. It's a possibility. And when do you get more? Um, it's every three months. No, four months. July 6th is when I get more. I get my full amount of time. I'll get more in June, I think, but... I get yes. a week each time, three times, or four times a year, though. So. Well, feel free to join me for a week. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be a trip of self discovery. <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna, gonna have a vision quest. I'm gonna read the Harvard classics. <laughs> uh, not all of them, probably, but a good chunk. <laughs> and uh, that's basically my goal: is to walk and like read those things. Um, maybe some fiction. <laughs> what about fan? Fiction? Not fan fiction. You gonna listen to podcasts while you're walking? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm getting uh, I'm getting a uh I'm not sure if I talked about this on the show already. I'm getting a MP3 player that's a USB uh thumb drive and you just like put MP3 files on it and then you can listen to them. Yeah. And uh I think it's 8 gigabits of uh of space, so that's a few podcasts. And I'll be, I'll try to get a uh the old gigabit I'll try to get a. <laughs> I'll try to get like more. Be basically, once a week, I'll try to get more of those. Nice. Fill up the thing nice. and uh, start a new. And it's charged by AAA, so I don't need like a charger for it. <coughs> I just need to grab like just a, bring a crap ton of, of batteries. Not a crap ton. That's a bad idea. Are you gonna bring your phone? Yeah, I'll bring my phone. Okay. Maybe you should do a call in, and we'll have like. I was in. thinking about a call in on checking in with Joe. Yeah. So that the episodes are long. <laughs> 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 
There's a bear. <laughs> Just cuts out. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Also, if a fan can write Joe's obituary, that'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> hey, now. Oh, Dude, now we're going to get, like, a flood of just, like, Joe obituaries. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, like, two obituaries at the most. That's a flood to some. Yeah. <laughs> to the, to the in- insignificance that is Greg. <laughs> All <laughs> right. you, piece of shit. <laughs> well, I think that's going to be it for today's episode of Nude Clan. Thank you for joining us here today. As always, you can go to NudeClan.net, which will take you to our UltimaFinalFantasy.com. Join there. It's forums. got forums. We've got lots of fun stuff going on. You go to Facebook.com slash NudeClanPodcast, and that's nude spelled N-E-W-D. You can go to NudeClanGaming at gmail.com, or at least send us a message there, and we can uh, we can correspond. In case forums aren't your thing. In case forums are not your thing, you can tweet me at Joseph DeGolier. Me at Obsidian Bar. At UFF Podcast. At Nude Clan Cam. Please join our Twitch channel. We're really trying to be variety streamers in so many ways. There's a variety of us playing a variety of games. There you go. It's twitch.tv slash Nude Clan Gaming. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the nude. Live always in the nude. May the list go on. Fuck off. (laughs) 